Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a simple timer GUI that starts when you touch one part, and then you have to try to get to this other part before the time expires. Okay, so that time I made it, so let me go back to the beginning and I'll start it again, but this time I won't make it to the other part in time. Okay, so if you don't make it to the other part in time, then your character will die. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in the workspace, you're gonna need two different parts. One of the parts is going to trigger the GUI to start, and then the other one is going to make it stop if you make it there in time. So go ahead and add those two parts. In the Explore menu, you wanna rename them to Start for the first one, and then Stop for the second one. Next, we're going to be making a simple GUI, which you see up here. So to do that, you wanna go under Starter GUI. You're going to add a Screen GUI. After you add the Screen GUI, you're going to rename it to Timer. Inside the Screen GUI, we're going to add a text label, and then rename that text label to just Label. You can customize the label to look however you want to by changing the options down here. After you customize it to make it look the way you want, we're going to add a local script for this label. Inside this local script, we're going to start with some variables. The first one is going to be local start, and this is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot start. So this is referencing the green part right here. After that, we're going to make a variable for the other part. So we'll say local stop is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot stop. Next, we're going to say local time underscore value, which we're going to abbreviate by saying VAL. And we're going to set that equal to 10. So this value right here is going to be whatever value you want to set for your timer. So if you want it to be 60 seconds, then you would put 60 here instead of 10. Next, we're going to say local timer underscore started. And we're going to set that equal to false. So this is how we're going to keep track to see if the timer is running or not. And then we're going to make another one called local completed. And that's also going to be set equal to false. Next, we're going to say local time underscore label. And this is going to be equal to script dot parent. So this is going to be a reference for our label right here. After that, we're going to make the label invisible to start with. So we'll say time underscore label. And then we're going to say dot visible. And we're going to set that equal to false. The next variable that we're going to create is going to be for the local player. So I'm going to say local. And then I'm going to do capital L and then player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players dot local player. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a function so that whenever the player touches the green part, it's going to make the label visible. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on that. We're going to say local function. And then for the function's name, we can say start underscore timer. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players colon find first child. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part dot parent dot name. Okay, so this line right here, make sure that whatever object touches our green part is a player. And then next, we're going to say if player dot name is equal to our local player dot name. And our timer has not started yet. So we're going to say and not timer underscore started. Then what we're going to do for the first part is just make the label visible. So to do that, we're going to say player dot player GUI dot timer. So at this point, we're talking about the screen GUI that we renamed to timer. And then inside the screen GUI, we want to reference the label. And then from there, we want to say dot visible. And we want to set that equal to true. Okay, so also inside this if statement, we want to set timer underscore started equal to true. So we're going to say timer underscore started, and we'll set that equal to true. Okay, so finally, we're going to link this function to a touch event. So we're going to say start 
dot touched colon connect and then we'll connect this with start underscore timer. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and make sure this part is working. Okay, so now if I touch the green part, I should have that label appear on the screen. Okay, and there we go. So the label appears on the screen, but right now it's not counting down. So the next part we're gonna work on is making that label count down. So before we move on to the countdown part, there's one more line of code that I wanna add. So right below this line right here, what we're gonna say is time underscore label. And we're going to set this equal to whatever our time value is that we set up here. And we can do that by just saying equal to and then time underscore value. So what you can do with this in the future, if you want to set a different time, then you can just change this number up here. So maybe you want to give them 30 seconds. And if we run the code, we can take a look and see what that does. So now when my player touches the green part, instead of 10 seconds, it would give them 30 seconds. Okay, so now to work on the countdown part. What we're going to do first is define another variable. So we're going to say local, and then we're going to say time underscore num for number. And we're going to set that equal to player dot player GUI dot timer dot label. And then from the label, we're going to get the text. And then what we have to do to this value is convert it into a number. And we can do that by saying to number and then putting that inside of parentheses. So what we're doing here is we're taking whatever value is stored for the text part of this label. So if you take a look at the label and then scroll down to the text section, right now it's storing 10. And what we're doing that is we're converting that value into a number by using two number. And then we're storing that inside of this variable right here. The way we're gonna use that is we're gonna say while time underscore num is greater than zero. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wait one second. After we wait for one second, then we're gonna subtract one from this value right here. So we're gonna say time underscore num is equal to the current value. And then we're gonna subtract one. Okay, next we're going to update the label. So we're gonna say player dot player GUI dot timer dot label. And we're going to set this equal to the string version. So we're going to say to string. And then we're going to put our time underscore num. And before we run the code, I noticed that we need to add dot text to this part right here. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and check it out. So now I'm going to have my player touch the green part. And when they do, we have a countdown. So it starts at 10 and it'll go all the way down to zero. All right, so that looks good. So the next part we're gonna work on is if the player gets down to zero, we're going to kill the player. Okay, so the way we're gonna kill the player if they don't make it to the other part in time is we're gonna say if not completed. So we're gonna set completed equal to true if they make it to the other part. So if they don't make it to the other part, then completed is still gonna be equal to false, which is what we set it to up here. So if it's not completed, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say player dot character dot humanoid dot health and we're going to set that equal to zero in addition to killing the player we also want to hide the gui so we can do that by saying player dot player gui dot timer dot label and then we're going to set its visibility equal to false Okay, and after the whole process is completed, then we want to reset some of the values. So we're going to say timer underscore started is equal to false. We want to reset the completed value. So we're going to say completed is equal to false. And then we're going to reset the label GUI by saying player dot player GUI dot timer dot label dot text and we're going to set that equal to the original value, which is time underscore VAL. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out and make sure it's working. Okay, so first, if I touch the green part, I still have the countdown. And the nice thing is, if they try to touch this part again, it doesn't reset the timer. So now, if I don't make it over to the red part, then my character dies. And when I respawn back into the game, I don't have the GUI visible. 
and if I want to, I can try and do it again. Okay, so right now we don't have any script for the red part here, so that's the next part we're going to work on. Okay, so for the other part, we're going to create another function. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can be finish underscore timer. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part. Okay, so the first thing like before is we're going to check for the player. So I'm just going to copy this line right here. And then we're going to say if player dot name is equal to our local player's name. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make the GUI invisible again. So we'll say player dot player GUI dot timer dot label dot visible. And we'll set that equal to false. And the other thing that we want to do when they touch this red part is set completed equal to true. And if we take a look at the script we wrote before, in this section right here, if completed is equal to true, then it's not going to run these two lines of code here. So if they make it to the other part, then it won't kill the player. All right, and the last thing we need to do is connect this function to the touch event. So we're going to say stop dot touched colon connect and then the name of our function, which is finish underscore timer. All right, so let's go and run the code and make sure everything's working. Okay, so I'm going to start by touching the green part, and then I'll run over to the red part and touch it. And we can see when I touch the red part, the GUI goes away, and my player is still alive. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.